We are in extreme northeast Arkansas, just no south of the Pemiscot Bayou in the distance there, about 100 yards away. And we have previously excavated a big trench here to expose an earthquake feature. This is known as a sand blow, and it's a classic one for the fact that you can see the vent where the sand and water during the earthquake erupted out and the host material subsided down as the sand and water came out over it. If you look here, you can actually see a streamer coming along here. This is the earliest of the sand that came out during the earthquake. And as it went through time, uh, the earthquake occurred, you got more sand that buried the initial phase here. And as it, it came on up, you, the ground was kept subsiding down and more sand and water was coming up from underneath. And then these big class of material here are or the host material were floating in this, moving in that direction toward the Pemiscot. This big piece classed here, or piece here, got ripped out of the sidewall of the host material, was blown up here, and then when the shaking stopped, or whatever the generation, generator was, the uh, class got locked in, in, in place right in this position. And it's been there probably for 200 years, uh, sitting, waiting for us to look at it here today. As I'm cleaning the floor of the trench off right here, you can actually see the contact between the host material and the sand blow vent or lateral spread that's running through here like this. There should be probably way off in the distance there. I don't know if I'd be lucky enough to run right in. Well, actually, there's the other side of it right there. So you've got the, the contact of the sand blow vent running along the floor it's a linear form, and then here it is coming up on the, the sidewall of the trench. And there's the uh, contact between where they, it comes together at the wall here. One way that we could possibly date this event is that if we found some carbon locked in the upper edge or the higher extremities of this host material and you could date that and so that would give you a you know a date before the earthquake happened and then if you say the great thing about archaeology which there's a lot of it in northeast arkansas if the native americans had came in and dug a pit here you would know that that earthquake had to happen before you know or Yes, before the Native Americans were in the area, and if we found charcoal, say, in the bottom of that pit, we could get a date off of it. So we could lock it in, more or less, at least some close, constrain it at least in time, from this carbon date to this carbon date. But in this particular situation, we think this is probably more or less the 1811 and 12, and most of the Native Americans had quit digging trenches in the area about that, at that time. In 1450, there was a vast population of Native American in the area farming uh, corn, squa squash, and beans. The Mississippians is what we term them as. They don't have a tribal name because we didn't get any contact with them to get any, you know, uh, direct information. Uh, so they were highly affected by these big earthquakes. Here we are standing on the former edge of the Pemiscot Bayou, which was probably right there at the time of the earthquake. And these trees are all sycamores, and if you look down through there, you'll see these flags that are indicating where the trees were located. The stumps are still somewhat here. This was excavated about 20 years ago, and they're starting to rot away now now that, now that they're exposed. But these are sycamore trees who like to grow next to the water's edge, all this slumped in, killing the trees probably within a year or two, preserving them, you know, below the uh, oxygen level where the water kept them preserved. Uh, we cut a biscuit out of one of them and uh, counted the rings on it. They were around 89 year old. And if they died during the 1450 event, they were probably coming up sometime during when Braveheart was running around in, uh, in Europe or England. 